Welcome. Today I'll be joined by actor and comedian Joe Coy. You know him from his Netflix specials, which are all hilarious. His appearances on Chelsea Lately and his movie Easter Sunday. What's good, man? How's the tour going? Oh, it's going great, man. This is uh this is by far the uh the busiest we've ever been. And uh I I've been so excited every show. So you're in Pennsylvania this week, but you're going as far as Australia. Um how does your act change when you go into these different spaces? Like, do people in Australia laughing at what the people in Pennsylvania laugh at? Yeah, man, they they laugh big, man. It's so funny. You don't really have to change anything, you know. Uh, I think now with the platform of Netflix getting it out to, uh, you know, as as far as Australia, all the way to Singapore, and uh, you know, to the Philippines you you get this core audience that falls in love with you and when you go uh, you know it's that built-in fan base they already they're already familiar with your work i think the only thing that i always uh stress the most is uh you know seeing the town and you know seeing how they live and and pick up on their cultures and their and their 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 little quirks that they do and talk about that on stage you know just to make you feel more at, at personal you know what i mean so that's the only difference and the reason why, you know, what, what it brings to mind is um, uh, when I do speaking gigs, I have this joke I, I do about uh, Whole Foods cereal and how the shit it gets soggy the second the milk hits it. You don't even yeah. get like, you know, the window is like three seconds before you can do something with it. Right. So, yes. you know, it worked really well uh, when I'm doing speaking gigs in Boston and New York, but I tried in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and the people in the audience were like, what the fuck is a Whole Foods? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure you know you're, you're, I did the same thing with a Safeway one time, and there, people were like, what's Safeway? So, yeah, you got to know your grocery stores when you go to different cities, for sure. They, you got to pivot to like, but, but equality. <laughs> yeah, man, it, it's so funny because it's like Carl's Jr. in the West Coast and it's Hardee's in the uh, in the East, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. In your comedy, you, you talk a lot about Filipino identity and your family. Um, wh what kind of themes are you going to be putting out there on this go around? Uh, this one, you know, it's it's more about my personal, uh, you know, personal what what I've gone through through so so far in this business. You know what I mean, my. You know, it's my 33rd year in stand-up. I started in 1989. So it's like, you know, I want to start talking about that and more personal stuff and what it took to, you know, to to get where I'm at now, you know, and let this generation know that it's just not as easy as you think. And the tools that they have, that they have now is something that I wish I would have had back when I was first starting. But, uh, you know, but also remind them that, you know, we opened the doors for them, you know, and the grind that we had to go through uh, makes it a lot easier for the generation now. People don't understand that overnight success stories take 10 years, sometimes yeah. 20. Sometimes Everybody, 30. <laughs> sometimes 30. Everybody yeah. wants it so fast. Can, can yeah. we get past that? I Man, you know, the one thing I, I, I try and let people know is if you're not passionate about it and if you're not in love with it, then get out of it because if you're if you're in it for for the money and the fame then then it's never going to be real the, you know you might as well just quit and find something else to do i love stand up like i'm good at a coffee house tomorrow night i'm good it doesn't need to be the united center in april you know what i mean it's i can be i can be at the laugh factory on sunset on a Wednesday night with 15 people, I'm I'm extremely happy because this is my passion. This is what I love to do. Now you're filling up arenas, but um, yeah. won't, won't you take us back to when you uh, opened up at Def Jam back in 96? Oh, man. <laughs> Yo, they don't even know that. That's the crazy thing. Like, you know, these these up and coming comics think they, you know, they, they don't even know the grind. They don't even know about, like, there's some that don't even know about Def Jam. And that's like a, a disgrace. Like, learn your history. Learn about this, this movement that took, pace, uh, that took place before you. You know what I mean? Like, find out what Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey had to do before you guys get to do what you get to do. You know, learn about the Chitlin Circuit. Learn about, you know, these theme nights that the uh, these comedy clubs would 
you know, put you on because you weren't good enough for the weekend shows, you know what I mean? Like a, a Fat Tuesdays or an Asian Invasion Thursdays or a Refried Fridays for the Latinos, you know, that come. And that show starts at midnight when everyone goes home. <laughs> already. So, like, they don't know about those shows. And, you know, like Def Jam, the way I got Def Jam is uh, I was friends with a comic named Honest John who was on BET's Comic View. And I did BET's Comic View when Gary Owen was the host. And uh, I met Honest John and he took me on the road and uh, he was like, man, I got to, you got, you got to do Def Jam, man. Like I do <laughs> Def Jam gigs and man, you would kill it. And, uh, and he was next time in Las Vegas on Def Jam, I'm going to bring you on. So he, Def Jam came and uh, he was a man of his word, Honest John. He, he took me backstage and he introduced me to Bob Sumner, who is the creator and the owner of Def Comedy Jam. It, you know, it's not Russell Simmons. Russell had the brand, but right. Bob Sumner created the show. And uh, and I remember standing backstage and uh, Honest John brought Bob Sumner up to me and Bob Sumner, he was eating like a, I think he was eating like a donut or something. I forgot, but he was eating and he was just talking to me and eating at the same time. Was like, he was like, uh, so uh, Honest John says, you're funny, huh? I'm like, yeah. He goes, all right, well, I'm mm -hmm. going to put you up, but uh, we're going to do it with the lights on. And uh, when you walk out, oh, we're not going to open the curtain. We're gonna, you're going to crawl through the curtain. And uh, don't say <laughs> welcome to Def Jam. And don't say, and when you say good night, just say good night. I'm Joe Coy. Don't say enjoy the show. Don't even be affiliated with Def Jam. Just crawl <laughs> right back underneath the curtain. And I'm like, my sister was there. Her, her fiance was there. And I just remember looking at him like, this guy just wants me to fail. Like, I'm not like, how is this going to? this is all failure right here. Like there's no way I'm going to be able to crush tonight. And uh, right when he left, the stage manager walked up to me and he was like, look, man, the house is at like 80%. We're going to turn the house lights down for you. He goes, but that's all I could do. He goes, I can't open up the curtains or nothing. And I go, that's all I need, man. And they literally opened up the curtain. I had to crawl through. You know, you remember the Carol Burnett show when they opened up a little yeah. and crawled underneath? <laughs> that was me. I crawled underneath. <laughs> 2,000 people I couldn't say welcome to Def Jam I just had to go hi I'm Joe Coy and then I had to do my act and uh, and I got a standing ovation that night and uh, I said good night and I crawled back through the curtain and Bob Sumner was standing there with Rudy Rush and Rudy Rush used to host a show called uh, The Apollo Showtime at The Apollo and he was hosting Def Jam that night and he looked at Bob he goes who's this guy I don't know if I can curse, if I can curse. Yeah, 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 you can. Oh, you he can goes, curse. who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah. And Bob Sumner goes, oh, that's that's Honest John's friend, Joe Coy. He's like, well, why the fuck you put him up first? You should put him right. in the middle of the show, man. He goes, now I got to follow that shit. And then I was like, I knew it was going to be funny. And then uh, and then uh, Rudy Brush goes, I'm going to put you on the Apollo. He goes, you ever, you ever watch the Apollo? I go, man, I love the Apollo. And he put me on the Apollo. Two weeks later, I was on the Apollo. I win the Apollo. And not only that, uh, Bob Sumner puts me on Def Comedy Jam and I start doing like spot dates on Def Comedy Jam. So that's how I got that. And so literally that, just walking on cold. Was that like like the first time you felt like you 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 kind of made it? You knew you were gonna be doing this for the rest of your life? Did it solidify? Well, I, I, I was already I was already uh there was another show called BET's Comic View. I remember Comic View. Yeah, and I got that. And the way I got that was crazy, too, because they were on the road, too. And I was working as a, a tour guide at the Dolphin Habitat. And uh, my friend was like, yo, I'm a dude's <laughs> here. And I literally had to beg my manager to let me off. I'm, I'm Like, I'm a tour guide in Vegas, bro. So I'm all sweaty. I drive home, grab my suit and a fake resume. I go all the way to this, uh, you know, to this venue. It was called the Country Star. It was like a nightclub. But De uh, Comic View was there, and uh, and I went all the way to the front of the line, and I went up to the security guard, and I was like, "Hey, man, I'm a I'm a local comic. Uh, a lot of people know who I am. Is there any way I could uh, talk to the promoter? I'd like to see if I can do like five minutes." And the security guard goes and gets the promoter. I've never ever had a a, a security guard do anything for me since. Yeah, security guards are mostly terrible people. They're horrible people. <laughs> they ain't leaving that stool in front of the door. This guy left. I, like <laughs> the gods were in my favor that day. He was like, "I'll be right back." And he went and got her. He brought her back. Uh, to this day, she's still my friend. Thirty years later, her name's Yvette Anderson, and she walked up. 
And I handed over my fake resume and I was just like, hey, I'm a local comic. I love to just warm up the crowd. Can I go up first, please? Just let me warm them up. And she's like, oh, the show already started. Uh, but you know what? Uh, next time uh, we come back to Vegas, I'll, I'll keep this resume and I'll, I'll keep you in mind. But do you want to watch the show? And I go, oh, my God, I'd love to. And she let me into the show. She sat me right next to the stage and there was this big, giant camera. And this is before I knew what what production was. Right. So I saw that big camera. I'm like, oh, they're shooting this for TV. So I'm just sitting by this camera. I kept looking at the camera and then everyone was late on the show. Every single comic was late. So now the crowd's going crazy. They're like booing and like start the show. And she walks up to me. She's like, you want to go up? <laughs> and I was like, can you record it with that camera? <laughs> she goes, Give me five minutes. And she set up the camera. She brought me up on stage. Once again, no one introduced me. I just walked on stage, did like five, 10 minutes, said goodnight, standing ovation. I know it sounds like I'm making it up, but I got it on video, by the way. And uh, I got a standing o. And uh, literally, this, as I is a, this, off, this is a real news site, so we'll, we'll, we'll verify everything. Like, we're gonna verify, oh, the, yeah, the funny. We're gonna dig, we're gonna do a deep dive. Oh, dig deep, dig deep. I'll, I'll get you the footage. <laughs> and uh, I walk off stage, and there was a comic named Bo P. He was like a huge comic back in the day on Comic View. And uh, and uh, he looked at me, he's like, You ever hear you, know, you ever been on Comic View? I go, No, and he goes, Uh, we put you on Comic View, and literally. Two weeks later, I was on Comic View with Gary Owen, and that's how me and Gary Owen became friends. But literally, I was working at a, at a Dolphin Habitat just two weeks before that. And so, you know, that was that was that was the beginning. But it's like now you're you're right there with your idols, um, Whoopi Goldberg, yeah. Chris Rock, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, selling out yeah. theaters. Um, what is arenas, what is, baby? Arenas, arenas, arenas. What is um, what does success mean to you at, at this point? Success to me is living my dream. Like I said earlier, like, mm -hmm. you know, the money is like, you know, uh, my boy Chase, a uh, fellow comic of mine, he always said like, everything else is a bonus. Like comedy is, is the DVD and everything else is the bonus features. Mm -hmm. And that's literally all this is. Everything else that's happening right now is just bonus features. It's like the, you know, the extras that I had no idea that came with the DVD but right now I'm living my DVD. I, I just wanted to be a stand-up comic since the day I saw Delirious and, and now I'm living it, you know? Those on stage outfits came a long way since Delirious. <laughs> yeah, man, a long, thank God I'm not wearing three shades of red. Yeah, they would be like, this guy's a high ranking blood. Man, when I, <laughs> dude, when I, when I saw uh, uh, an interview with Eddie Murphy and he said that he had three different shades of red, I never even noticed. <laughs> and then when I watched the, the interview, I was like, oh, my God, that is three shades of red because he bought all three of them like mismatched. Like, you know what I mean? Right, it was like, right. it was so funny. Um, I loved your film, Easter Sunday. Um, it's about a dysfunctional Filipino family. You play Joe, a struggling actor. Can you take us take us to the, to the story be, behind that role? So this is a this is a cool story, too. It was uh, we literally get a call from Amblin, which is Steven Spielberg's company. And they, they call us in for a general, you know, just a general meeting. You go in, you you tell them about you and they tell us about them. And then, you know, you shake hands and laugh and then you leave and then nothing happens. And that's what goes on in Hollywood, right? Absolutely. That's usually what happens in a, in a general. So we get this call and that's kind of like our mental, like that's how we're mentally prepared for this meeting. And we walk in and the minute we walk in, you know, the front desk lady is like, Mr. Oh, Steven can't stop talking about you. Like, like Steven loves you. And I'm like, oh, okay. Tell Steven I said hi. <laughs> then, then the next person comes and gets us like, yo, Steven loves you. And I'm like, okay. And now me and my manager are looking at each other like, what? I love you too, we Steven. Go to the meeting. And then we go to the meeting. And then it's like immediately, you know, Holly and Jeb, you know, the execs are like, Steven can't stop talking. And I'm like, yo, are we talking about the same Steven? Is this Steven from accounting? <laughs> <laughs> there's no way in hell it's steven spielberg so just is it steven from accounting because i understand if there's a and they're like no it's steven spielberg and and uh he loves your work and he loves your stories and uh and he wants to know if you have an idea of a movie and and literally i pitched that movie easter sunday because it was something i've always thought about and i pitched that movie in the room and and they bought it right there in the room and that and literally it's like a fairy tale story 
It went from him watching my Netflix special, making a phone call, meeting, and next thing you know, about six months or eight months later, we're, we're, we're in Vancouver shooting a movie. Everything worked out for Joe in a movie as well. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I love that movie, man. I love it. It's it's a passion project. It was it was a love letter to my my family, my mom, and you know you're you're talking about immigrants that moved to this country years ago, and you know they worked their their asses off, and you know they're nurses, and and you know they 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 work in these hospitals, you know, for the past fifty years, you know, here in America, and you know they work fourteen hour shifts, and they go home and. And they turn on the TV and they watch a TV show about a hospital and not one Filipino nurse is represented. And they and that's how they they've lived their life here in America for the past 50 years. And and to them, how do they feel? You know, they feel invisible, right? They they feel like like they're just visitors. And 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 that's what that movie's all about. It's 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 for them to feel like, yeah, we're here and and you see us and and this is ours. There's not much Filipino representation in Hollywood and definitely not in, in comedy um, when you talk in mainstream. You're the guy. Do you ever feel pressure to be uh, the, the, like you have to represent your whole community? I, you know, I just, I want to tell my story personally, right? So like if mm -hmm. I'm talking about Filipinos, it's about my mom. And 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 that's, you know, I, I've, you know, I'm in love with the storytellers and, and I, and I, you know, I, that's why I loved Eddie Murphy so much. And that's why I related to Eddie so much when he talked about aunt bunny and uncle Gus, I, I'm thinking about my, you know, my uncle Ray and my Ati Lin. So it's like, I was identifying with them, you know, although I didn't have, you know, any inspiration on TV for me to look up to, I would gravitate towards black comedy because I always felt like, when they talked about their families, it, it was closer to my family. <laughs> and, and that's why I gravitated to it so much. And that's why I love storytellers so much. And that's why I tell my story. And it's like, as long as I can tell my story about my culture and my family to let people know about my culture, then that makes me feel good because then I see other Filipinos like gravitating towards it and go, yeah, my mom's just like your mom. But what I love the most is getting white people and black people and latinos and other asians that go my mom does the same shit <laughs> and then that makes me even happier and and you'll grind and, and you'll grow and you'll create all of these different opportunities and then one day the same way joe biden says hey if you don't vote for me you ain't black he's gonna be like if you don't vote for me you ain't filipino and then that's <laughs> That's how you know. That's how you know you made it. <laughs> Man, I, I yeah, I, I just want to be able to like open the door more. That's mm -hmm. that's my most, you know, like after I got my first special, you know, I, I, I wanted to go to the Philippines so bad and shoot my 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 third special there, which was called In His Elements. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to like showcase nothing but Filipinos and have a cameraman that was Filipino and just like the audience is full of Filipinos and show the world that, hey, you come to the Philippines, they speak English and they understand this kind of, you know, they understand this type of humor and they understand this type of entertainment. You know, it's not so foreign. Like it was kind of like my way of like giving back to the Filipino uh, community. And and that's all that was. And, and I, I just want to continue that without shoving it down your throat, you know? It's a it's a big I don't know if you um if you ever make it to Baltimore, but it's a it's a big Filipino um community here. All of our teachers when I was oh, like a so kid dope. coming up, all of the math teachers were for the Philippines. Oh, that's so dope. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I love the most though is you know, like I'm doing arenas now and mm -hmm. it's like it's 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 insane. It's like, you know, I sold you know, like I, I during the playoffs in San Francisco, Golden State Warriors are playing on Thursday. I'm playing on Friday. They're playing on Saturday. I'm playing on Sunday, and it's all that's sold fine. out. Yeah, that's fine. And right. it's not all Filipinos there. It's it's mm -hmm. every color. It's like you know when you go to you know I'll be in D.C. Mm -hmm. this Friday or this Saturday, and it's like it's twelve thousand people, and it's like that's not twelve thousand Filipinos. You know, at right. the most, you know, we're we're gonna get about two thousand Filipinos in there. It's 10,000 other people in there. Every demo is in there. And that's the beauty of what's happening right now. Like, funny is funny. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. It doesn't matter, you know, what you are. As, as, if, as long as you're funny, it, it's relatable. And, and it's, it's, 
it's it's blind. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't I, matter. I feel like, I feel like comedy used to be segregated like church, but now and you're right. It's starting to mix in. And what well, do you yeah, think man. it's the specials? Do you think it's the social media? Or what do you think is bringing everyone together? I think like that's that? exactly what it is. You know, and it, and it, you know, and I and I'm glad that these platforms like Netflix has shown us that hey, man, like we can't we can't fall on that excuse anymore. Go, uh, that you know, because back in the day when you used to live in Hollywood. They used to fall on this excuse all the time. I don't think middle America will get it. Well, who the fuck lives in middle America? America. <laughs> like, what color are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, right. like without telling us, what are you telling us? Right. Oh, they're not going to get it in middle America. So, you know, and those are the ones that watch this a lot. And it's just like, it was just like some racist shit. You know what I mean? And it's just like, with, with, with the platforms like streaming and, you know, like Netflix and Amazon and, you know, all these, you know, Hulu that, that go across the world. Now you can't follow on that, that excuse to say middle America won't get it because now they're showing you that the world gets it. We There's just named it. Sold out in Sydney, <laughs> Australia. There's a reason why I'm sold out at Madison Square Garden. There's a reason why I sold out Manila and I'm sold out in Singapore because they fucking get it. We, we just named your new, your next special, fuck middle America. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll shoot it in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell, but I'll, I'll come back the arena. You talk, a, you talk a lot about about your own family and your stand up as well. Um, how does your mom feel about playing a, such a big role in your comedy? Uh, you know, the, the attention is beautiful. You know, what I mean? <laughs> it's like she, she's, you know, she's huge. Uh, people love her, and and rightfully so. So I'm glad. And and fuck, man, like it's just, it's just a beautiful thing to be like recognized you know like like i can only sympathize for all those immigrants that come here and i'm not just talking about filipinos i'm talking about every immigrant you know what i mean everyone from you know latinos to asians to africans like you know when they turn on the tv they're like well where am i because i live here right I work, I work i work at the post office but when i see a tv show about a post office they ain't got a guy from Africa, right. <laughs> you know, got a guy from, you know, it's always like the same cosmetic makeup on all these shows. And it's just like, I, I, I don't get it. You know, we're starting to get more shows that are, you know, have a, a, a more, you know, more colors on the palette. Right. I mean, but when I was growing up, it was like the Cosby's or, you know, right. <laughs> or growing pains and it was just like okay well is it the white family tonight or the black family tonight and, it's just and we like, can we can be real and we, we we should we should be looking for that to be real because in all fairness um i'm waiting for some shoes right now nigerian fedex guy fuck my package up that's there we go that's Get his ass on the show <laughs> and let's be, let's destroy his ass on a, on a sitcom uh you mentioned you mentioned your son um, I have a daughter right now with three year old, and um, I'm 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 trying to raise her with some of the influences of my upbringing, um, but not all of them. Do you do you go through that? Um, those identity questions when you're trying to make sure you're pointing your son in the right direction. Yeah, you know, but I, it's it's hard. It, it, you know, I never thought I was gonna fall in the old dad section, and damn it, I fell in the old dad section. I just how, how old were you? How old were you when your son was born? 33. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm an old dad. I was 39 when my daughter was born. Oh, yeah. I'm an old dad. I'm an old dad. You're old. You are old dad. <laughs> old dad. You already had sciatica when you had your daughter. I'm, 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 I said, when I was in the hospital, I'm like, I'm the grandfather. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Man. But yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because now, you know, I, Unfortunately, the technology is moving so fast and he grew up with it. So he speaks that language. I don't speak it. You know, I, I still, uh, you know, I have to go to my son to help me download apps. You know what I mean? It's it's just me. I'm old. I'm I, I'm in that category. It's kind of like when my dad was like, I ain't buying bottled water. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real thing. Like, I remember my dad saying, I will never buy bottled water. It's like. We all have to adjust with the times, you know, and that's how it is. 
you know, one of the luxuries of, of being an old dad or just, you know, being able to reflect on your life and, and decisions as, as you grow. One of the things I respect about you a lot is um, forgiveness. You've been vocal about being friends with ex-lovers and not having toxic relationships, but just keeping right. everything, um, you know, because most people, including myself, once I break up with somebody, they're kind of like, in a way, dead. <laughs> <laughs> like... The, the, you know, uh, like no access. I, I, I'm not. I'm not angry, but at the same yeah. time, I'm not like. Uh, I'm not really. We're not cordial. Yeah. Don't get me wrong here, though. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not friends with my exes, but when I break up with them, it's just a cool breakup. I ain't mad at you. Right. You move on. I, I'm a. I'm a definitely move on. I'm good. So it's like it's, it's easy for me to break up, and it's just like okay, we we can't be a couple. That's fine. Like I don't need to sit here and be like I hate you so much. Right. And look, why? That's wasted energy. Now my son's mommy. That's, that's like different. That's, that's different. That's, that's different. That's my role. Yeah, I love. I love my mom. My son's mommy. She gave me my son. Uh, like literally, I, I bought her a house right here. Where. <laughs> She lives right here next to this house that's being built. So there's a house in front of that. And that's where my son's mommy lives. And I love it. I fucking love it. So, and, you know, if you get a divorce or, or whatever it is, you know, maintain that beautiful relationship with the baby's mama, because it's just, you're, you're going to be together for the rest of your lives. You're connected through a child, man. And, right. and, and what, 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 what good is it when you guys fight all the time? Like, that's dumb. Like the only person that, that that suffers is the kid, and you don't. And I and I'm speaking on behalf of my mom and dad going through a divorce and not talking for years, and it it affected my relationship with my father, and and I don't want that to ever happen with my son. So I I always remember how I felt when my dad wasn't present. So it takes a lot of work, but shit, man, that's my best friend. She's right there. <laughs> so don't tell my wife that Joy Coy, Joe Coy told me to go reach out to my last six exes. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> I, just I know. The baby's mama, the, the baby mama, that one you talk to for the rest of your life. I, I know, I know, I know the tour is amazing and going is going to continue to be amazing. Um, are you are you filming another special while you're on the road right now? We're just building this, up. Um, this this hour that I got right now, oof. Oof. It's good. This one feels really good. And no, it doesn't feel really good. It it's it's good. Like I love what I'm saying. I love the message that I'm saying. And I, I just it's just uh it's it's just it's me in a in a comfortable place now. You know, my first three specials was always me like grooving and, and telling this, you know, you know, and I have a beautiful relationship with Netflix. I love everyone over there, but it was, you know, it was work. It was a lot of work. You know, the, the first special, you know, uh, live from Seattle, they, they said no to it. And I literally had to go and shoot it myself and pay it with my money and edit it myself and, and then hand it to them after they already said no to me. So it was like, dude, that not only was it like that, but I put the cameras in the theater to shoot it two days before we shot it netflix calls my manager and goes hey we found out joe's shooting his, that special we we really want you to know we don't want it it was like it was <laughs> that kind of pressure it was that kind of pressure <laughs> all my money in all of it and the only place i want to sell it is to netflix and they reconfirmed mm -hmm. we don't want it so and, and we still shot it and 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 they ended up buying it and, that's a beautiful story that's a beautiful story within itself and it's cool because like if you were like a a, a professional basketball player then like your knees would be cracking and your career would be over but yeah. you know right now you're just getting better and better and better and better and better won't you oh, tell you. tell everybody where they can keep up with you for tour dates and and, and uh, to, to get a hold of everything you have going on everything's joe coy j-o-k-o-y everything so twitter facebook instagram website it's all joe coy so tiktok and that's 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 it you can go there and uh man. that's it man thank you man and good luck with the tour have a blessed one